Namaste and welcome to Flow and Restore Yoga. My name is Michelle Chua and for today's practice, you'll want to have two blocks, a strap, a bolster, and a blanket. Let's start in hero's pose if that works for you. Hero's pose, setting your knees in front of you as you sit either directly on your calves, pointing the toes back, or sitting on a block, maybe two blocks, stacked between the ankles. In today's physical practice, I thought today we would focus on the heart chakra, which will look like physically opening the area of the shoulders, the heart chakra, as you might already know, Anahata chakra, um, also has to do with the lungs. So breath work helps to invite more balanced energy flow through the heart center and also working with the arms, which are often called the extension of the heart, like when you give someone a hug. And energetically and emotionally and mentally, it looks like tapping into what brings you joy, what opens your heart, and what stokes your perception of um, perceiving with compassion, with loving kindness, with loving awareness. All right, I want to start with a quick read, highlighting one of the yamas. We've been going through the different yamas, which means the first limb of the eight limbs of yoga, which has five practices in which are often looked at as ethical codes or ethical guidelines and how to live in harmony with the world around us. So this next yama is called brahmacharya. Brahma means God, energy, creative life force, and charya means to follow. So here's a short definition by Gabrielle Harris in the Inspired Yoga Teacher book. This poetic sounding yama means to walk as though God resides within you. When we live our lives feeling as though we are both divine and sacred, we are less likely to make choices that deplete our vital life force. If we practice brahmacharya, we become wise to squandering precious energy in the pursuit of unimportant or depleting actions. Like a squirrel storing nuts, we work at gathering our scattered prana, try to eliminate distractions focus on what is essential and practice yoga postures with consciousness to conserve energy while moderating or controlling what leaks out of us. So I've often described this as being mindful of how we generate, how we cultivate energy, how we direct our energy, um, everything that affects our energy and the quality of our energy. So when our mind is scattered or we're trying to multitask, our energy is sort of spread thin, having to juggle it among so many things. Our practice of yoga is focusing our energy on one thing wholeheartedly at a time. So we're focusing on the breath, we're focusing on the posture and how our body is placed in it. And in this way, we're, we're bringing to alignment our mind, our awareness, our breath, our body, our spirit. And in that alignment, we hope to be more intentional with our energy and conserve it, not squandering it on meaningless things, things that might waste our energy unnecessarily. And so with that, let's start by checking in. As you're sitting still, you might close your eyes. Begin to observe your physical body. Noticing first what is calling your attention through any sensation without having to judge what you're noticing is either good or bad. Make note of areas that might feel tense, might feel open, strong, tired, relaxed, anything. Observing your overall physical state. Let's go another layer inward, noticing the breath. 
as you feel the qualities of your breathing right now, what do you notice about your energy? And yet another layer inward, observing our mind and heart, what's present for you mentally and emotionally. Holding loving space for whatever that is. Let's start to deepen the breath. Exhaling slowly through the mouth. Inhaling a little deeper through the nose. And just as slowly through the mouth. Continue deepening your breath. And I invite you to acknowledge something that you feel grateful for. Anything. And gratitude is one of the ways we can stoke the energy of the heart, awaken the energy of love. So with gratitude, what is something you would like to cultivate in your practice today? Is there some aspect in your life in which you'd like to bring more joy or forgiveness or compassion or love? Loving awareness. And then is there someone that comes to mind that you would like to extend loving kindness to by making an offering of today's practice for them, for their well being? Together, let's join our voices in support of each other by creating resonance, chanting OM three times. Inhale a little deeper. Let's continue to breathe in and out with the lips closed. And we'll begin a practice of breathing called Bhastrika Pranayama or bellows breath. This style of breathing helps to cleanse the lungs, awaken energy, prana, get it invigorated, as well as bring clarity to the mind. So this goes well with our practice of brahmacharya. It's done by fully inhaling as though you're expanding your whole torso. So you're even expanding the belly using your diaphragm and just as strongly exhaling through the nose. Deep breath in, deep breath out, all with the lips closed. Now there's a physical movement that helps to generate even more energy by bending the elbows apart as you relax the shoulders to the height of the shoulders, sitting tall, hands are like this. And as you breathe in, you straighten the arms, spread the fingers. And as you breathe out, you bend the elbows and refist the hands like this. Let's try practicing at a brisk pace that you can sustain for one minute of bellows breath. You might close your eyes and steady your gaze towards your heart energy center, towards the sternum. All right, let's prepare for one minute of bellows breath. Ready? Begin. (laughs) 
We're halfway through. and relax. Breathing naturally for a moment, notice how you feel. Particularly notice any subtle shifts in your energy. Let's continue breathing through the nose, lips closed. Now practicing another breathing technique that will bring us into our postures. And that technique is called Ujjayi Pranayama. It means victorious breath. It helps to balance your energy, both steady effort with easefulness, and it helps to relax and focus your mind and your body. So while closing the lips, softly constrict the back of your throat so that you can hear a very gentle and smooth whispering sound as you lengthen the breath equally in to the very top and out to the very bottom. Listen to a couple cycles as you're sitting here now. Making sure the breath doesn't sound forceful. And you're really taking your time to reach both ends of the breath. Creating a steady rhythm with which we'll move the body in a moment. So listening to your breathing, please start to make your way into tabletop pose, lowering down onto your hands and your knees. As you set your fingers apart at the top of your mat, stack your shoulders over your wrists, spin the hands to turn out to whatever degree so we can stretch the inner wrists and forearms. And step your knees back a couple of inches behind your hips. Let's move to the breath in cat-cow pose, Vitalasana. So on your next inhalation, glide your chest forward, roll your shoulders back and down, lifting the chest and your gaze cow pose. As you exhale, contract your abdomen, slowly dropping your head to round your back into cat pose. Again, inhale, draw your sternum forward, coiling your chest up. Exhale, lift the navel in, tilt the tailbone down, slowly drop the head. Keep going another three to five cycles with your breath pace. On your next exhalation, relax to a neutral spine and then lean back to sit on your shins or stand on your knees and just roll out your wrists, maybe shake out your arms, roll out your shoulders, remembering that the arms and the hands are an extension of the energy of the heart as we're working with the heart chakra. So let's stretch the outer wrist this time, making fists with your hands, press your fists into each other. Keep that shape and now place the backs of your fists about one foot in front of your knees onto the ground. Bending your elbows off the ground and apart, slide the shoulders away from the neck and gently shift your weight forward to the amount of intensity you wanna feel the stretch. Breathing in slowly, breathing out just as slowly. Fine tuning the qualities of balance, easefulness and steadiness you can hear in the breath. Maybe shake the head gently. No, a couple more breaths. Relaxing your tongue, relaxing your jaw. 
And then this time lean back again on your shins or stand on your knees and shake out your hands. Let's make our way to stand at the top of the mat in mountain pose to begin our sun salutations. Now, if you wanna have two blocks in front of your feet, that can help to press your hands into if the ground feels too low to reach. Step your feet apart, hips distance parallel to each other and join your hands in prayer at your heart center. Feeling the energy of your intention that you are cultivating in today's practice. And offering gratitude sincerely to the sun, a great source of energy for all of life on this planet, including ours. Let's begin sun salutation C, Surya Namaskar C to the breath. Inhale, sweep your arms forward, roll your shoulders back and down, lifting your heart towards the sky. Exhale, hinge forward from your hips, bowing as though you have a flat back. Feel free to bend the knees. Plant the fingertips on the ground. Inhale, step your left knee behind you to a kneeling lunge and look up. Hold your breath as you step to plank pose. Exhale, lower your knees, chest, then chin in Ashtangasana. Inhale, slither forward. Draw the shoulders back in Cobra, Bhujangasana. Exhale, tuck your toes. Lift your hips back into downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, step your left foot beside your left thumb. Lower your right knee and gaze up. Exhale, step your right foot forward and bow, pressing through the feet. Inhale, root down to rise all the way up, sweeping the arms overhead and coiling your chest up. Exhale, marry your palms in prayer at your heart center side two inhale sweep the arms overhead again lifting the chest urdhva hastasana exhale fold over your legs in uttanasana plant your fingertips down inhale step your right knee back in anjaneyasana gaze up hold your breath as you step to plank exhale lower your knees chest then chin Inhale, slide forward into Cobra Pose. Root down through the tops of your feet. Exhale, lift the hips back, downward facing dog. Inhale, step your right foot beside your right thumb. Lower your left knee and gaze up. Exhale, step your left foot forward and bow. Press through your feet, inhale, rise. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, connect your palms in prayer at heart center. Let's move into Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Press your blocks or the floor. Inhale, lengthen your spine forward into Ardha Uttanasana, half forward fold. Exhale, step into plank and glide forward. Graze your elbows by your ribs, passing through Chaturanga Dandasana. Then inhale to Cobra or Upward Facing Dog. Exhale into Downward Facing Dog. Pausing there. Steady your gaze, your drishti for two deep breaths. When you've emptied the second breath, Walk or lightly jump to the front of your mat in a forward fold. Inhale, half forward fold, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Rooting down, inhale, rise up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, your hands together at the heart center. Let's move into sun salutation B, continuing to warm up in our flow. With your feet touching, bend your knees to touch. Inhale, sit low in chair pose, Utkatasana. Exhale, shift forward and fold, Uttanasana. Press with your hands and inhale, lengthen forward, Ardha Uttanasana. Step into plank or lightly jump to Chaturanga if you normally practice that. 
continue down through your vinyasa. When you arrive in downward facing dog, keep your hips leveled and inhale, raise your right leg behind you. Exhale, bend the knee towards your nose to quietly land the foot beside your right thumb, spinning the left heel down. Inhale, rise into warrior one. Exhale, lower into your version of your vinyasa. When you arrive in downward facing side two, inhale, raise your left leg back. Exhale, bend the knee towards your nose. Step the foot lightly beside the left thumb. Right heel down. Inhale to veer of Adrasana one. Exhale to lower and finish your vinyasa. Once again, find stillness in downward dog, this time for about three to five breaths, slowing down your breathing. And notice how you are approaching your movements and postures in what quality of energy as you're being mindful of being focused with our energy, not overdoing or underdoing, but balancing our energy. Notice if you can hear that in your breathing. When you've emptied the next breath, walk or float to the front of your mat, feet touching, forward fold. Inhale, half forward fold. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees together, inhale, chair pose. Exhale, mountain pose, hands at the heart. All right, let's step the feet wide apart, facing the wide width of your mat and parallel your feet to each other. Bring the hands behind you to clasp and let's open up the front of the shoulders. If you can, hug the heels of your palms together to touch. Roll your shoulders back as you breathe in, look up. Feel free to bend your knees any amount needed so that as you fold from the hips, you can cultivate the feeling of a flat back. Tilt your weight forward enough so that you can see your hips in alignment with your ankles rather than behind the ankles. And then let the head hang freely. You might shake it out. Let the jaw relax. That's also connected to the heart chakra and the throat chakra. So stretching your arms forward, bending the elbows slightly, lift the shoulder bones and drop the head. Few more deep breaths in this version of Prasarita Padottanasana. Wide legged forward fold. We're going to add a spinal twist and continue opening the front of the shoulders. So lower your fingertips on the ground, if not the ground, on two blocks. And crawl your hands forward, stretching your spine parallel to the earth. I'm going to mirror you here. So place your right hand down front and center on the ground or a block. Level your two hips and breathe in as you stretch the top of your head forward. Keep your pelvis leveled and still and breathe out. Turn your chest to your left then raise your left arm up. Left palm is facing the back of your mat or the left wall. Draw the shoulders back. Continue twisting as you breathe out. Imagine your heart center here. And you're breathing from there across your entire wingspan, creating a long line across the arms. Two more breaths. As you exhale, switch hands on the ground. Level out the hips, breathe in and stretch the spine forward, draw the shoulders back, keep the pelvis still. And exhale as you turn the rib cage to your right side, raising the right arm. Palm is facing the wall that you're now looking towards. Each inhale from down through the feet and keep stretching your spine forward. Each exhale, keep your pelvis still, continue rotating the rib cage, opening wide across your collarbones and beyond your fingertips. Last two deep breaths. And release both hands. 
Let's walk the hands to the front of your mat. Pivot to face the front in the lunge. Step back to hands and knees, all fours. All right, let's continue opening up the shoulders in different ways. This will open up the backs of the shoulders, like the latissimus dorsi region, the shoulder blade area, um, more of the upper back and the triceps too. Let's uh, grab two blocks, place them on their medium height, this height, and place them like a number 11 at the top of your mat. Your shoulders distance apart. And extend your arms forward, palms face down to start. Spin your triceps or outer upper arms towards the floor to help spread the shoulder blades apart, protract them, and then draw the shoulder blades downward. Plug them onto the back ribs away from the neck. Keep doing those two things and bend your elbows, place your elbows on the blocks, press your fingertips into each other. Now step your knees back so they are a couple inches behind the hips, then start to trace your thumbs down the back of your skull, down the back of your neck, as far back as you can trace the thumbs, while keeping the elbows on the blocks, shoulders width apart, not wider. Allow your chest to sink as you're broadening it, but firm your belly up towards your back, supporting the lower spine. Let's tune into about eight more deep breaths in this posture. At the end of your next exhale, slowly rise up and off the blocks. Okay, let's widen the space between the blocks and step your right foot forward into a kneeling lunge. Now, from here, step your right foot to the right another three to five inches so we can come into lizard lunge. We're going to focus a bit more on the shoulders and your hip flexors and quadriceps, the fronts of the thighs, which actually helps in um, creating more back bends and opening the shoulders deeper. Now you might want to have two blocks stacked on their lowest height like this under your left hand. Scoot your left knee back an inch or two and bend it. Lean your torso forward so your weight is not on your left kneecap. Your weight is on your left thigh. Then backstroke your right arm so that you're opening the front of the shoulder and catch the outer side of your left ankle or foot. Then you can lean forward a bit more as you're bringing that foot closer to your glute. Some of you might find it reachable with your left hand entirely on the floor as you do this, or your left forearm on the floor, which goes deeper into the hips. Now with the hips, you can either keep your right foot flat on the ground, toes facing forward, or to go deeper into the IT band region, which is your outer right thigh, Flex the right foot to stabilize the knee as you splay your right thigh open, just leaning the outer edge of your foot on the ground, but not rolling over onto the outer ankle and sickling the foot. All right, we're going to be here for about 10 deep breaths in this variation of lizard lunge. Draw both shoulder blades down your back ribs, especially the left shoulder, which we can forget about in this pose. And you decide if you want to look over the right shoulder, that might be a way to stretch your neck. If that feels strenuous, you can look forward, more neutral, or you can look downward towards your inner left elbow.
On your next exhalation, gently release your back foot. Place your hands on the ground and take your two blocks, place them both underneath your hands inside of your right calf. So keep the heel, the right heel where it is, flex the right foot, straighten the right leg to whatever degree you can, plugging the thigh bone back. At the same time, reach your chest forward on the inner side of the right leg and start to bow in as if you have a flat back. So only go as far as you're not straining the shoulders by rounding them in this variation of half split. Notice the quality of your breathing here. By being intentional with the breath, you are being intentional with your energy. One more deep breath. And let's start to step the right foot back gently. Take your time transitioning, no rush. Walk the left foot forward on the left side of your hands. And let's prepare for lizard lunge, side two. Now you might stack two lowest height blocks under your right hand as you bend the right knee and scoot it back leaning the torso forward so that you can backstroke the left arm, open the front of the shoulder and reach for the outer side of your right foot, bringing it gently towards your glute. If you find that your hip is really pretty open and you can lower onto your hand on the ground or your forearm, you can take that version. Now make sure that you're not over bending your front knee where it's passing in front of the ankle, but rather it's directly above the ankle. Keep the knee joint safe. Now, what did you do to the front leg on the first side of lizard lunge? Try to do the same here. Either left foot flat on the floor, toes facing forward, or flex the left foot and splay the thigh open, leaning on the outer edge of the foot. Let's tune in to 10 full breaths. Relaxing both shoulders away from the neck. Notice where you're steadying your eyes. It's, that's also another way to be intentional with our energy. What we give our visual attention, we are sending our energy towards. Maybe you close your eyes and focus a bit more on the breath. Or your heart energy center. One more deep breath. Now release the back foot gently and keep both hands on the inner side of the left foot as you place the left foot flat on the floor, grab your blocks for each hand and flex your left foot as you lift the ball of the foot. Straighten the left leg by plugging the thigh back towards the hip socket while reaching your chest forward, create the feeling of a flat back and bow in to your degree on this side wide-legged version of half split, Ardha Hanumanasana.
slowly begin to lift your chest, slide the back foot forward so you can lower to sit with legs in front. And as your legs are in front of you, notice if it's helpful to sit up on your folded blanket or pillow so that your spine is more upright, not rounded. And we're gonna come into a hip and shoulder opening posture called Gomukhasana, cow face pose. This also helps to open up the glutes, the lower back and the outer hips. All right, let's extend the left leg forward, turn out the right thigh and hug it over the left thigh as close together as you can. Now either keep the bottom leg straight and flex the foot or bend the bottom knee as well and splay the feet maybe wider apart. Ground your sitting bones evenly and sit tall. Now with the right leg on top, raise your left arm. Now, you might find it helpful to dangle a strap behind you from that left hand. Use your right hand to rotate the left tricep forward and bring the elbow behind your head, pressing the shoulders down, lifting the chin parallel to the ground and sealing in the bottom of your front ribs. Reach the right hand behind you underneath, catch the bottom end of the strap. Walk your hands as close together as you can. Now, if you're able to clasp your hands, you can let go of the strap. Try to keep your left elbow pointing upwards towards the sky rather than to the left. Sit up a little taller as you breathe in. Stay here or if it's available, start to hinge forward from the hips as you breathe out little by little. Press down to your sitting bones, and as you breathe in, lead with your chest to slowly rise. Release your arms and uncross your legs, and take a moment to sit in stick pose, extending both legs in front as you sit tall, in stillness, observing your body as you feel the breath in balance. Dandasana, stick pose. Let's set up for side two, if you can, in a similar way. So turn out the left thigh and hug it as close as you can over the right thigh, bottom leg straight and bottom foot flexed, or bend both knees and splay the feet apart. Whatever allows you to evenly root your sitting bones and sit tall. Now raising the right arm, you might find it helpful to dangle a strap behind you from the right hand. With your left hand, spin your right tricep forward and bring the elbow behind your head. Press the shoulders down, lift your chin parallel to the ground, and seal in the bottom of your front ribs. Reach your left hand behind you underneath, catch the bottom end of the strap, and walk your hands as close together as you can. If you're able to clasp the hands, release the strap. As you breathe in, press into the floor and rise a little taller to your crown. Stay here or exhale, begin to explore hinging from the hips. Press down to your hips, lead with your chest, inhale to slowly rise. Release your arms, stretch out your legs into Dandasana stick pose. Again, pausing for a few deep breaths. Notice what you notice in your body.
Let's prepare for seated forward fold. Take your strap if you would like to use it as an extension of your arms to help relax the shoulders, create space in the neck, and place the strap around the balls of your feet. Separate your feet hips width apart and kick into the strap as you flex your feet, curling the toes back. Root down to your sitting bones and breathe in and lift up from the base of your spine through each vertebra through the back of your skull. Open the chest, open the throat. Keep your heart center slightly lifted and as you exhale, hinge just a little bit from the hips. As you inhale, press the pelvis down and stretch the spine where it is. Exhale, only fold deeper if you can keep the shoulders relaxed. Now, some of you might be able to reach your big toes with your peace fingers to clasp. Paschimottanasana, another seven deep breaths. Pressing down to your hips, breathe in and rise from your heart center all the way up. Relax your feet. All right, before we lower for one last restorative posture, a heart opening pose, supported fish, I'm going to invite you into one more breathing technique so that we can stay lying on our back and enter Shavasana right after. So find a way to sit that you can breathe well. And this breathing technique is called Durga Pranayama, three-part breathing, which helps us to really feel the full capacity of the lungs, the belly, receiving the breath. And it also helps us to focus on more yin energy as we lengthen the out-breath even slower than the in-breath. So what we'll do is imagine that your torso, which is from your pelvic floor all the way up to the top of your neck, all the way around, is a jar. Visualize dividing that jar into three equal parts, cross sections. From your belly button to your pelvic floor is the first section. Most of your rib gauge is encompassed in the second section. And the chest, upper back, shoulders, and neck is the third section. Now we'll inhale one third into the lowest section and pause. We'll inhale another third into the middle section and pause. And we'll inhale the last third to the very top, holding the breath, sitting tall and relaxed. Then through the nose, we'll exhale really slowly and hold the breath out. That's one cycle. Let's practice three cycles of Durga Pranayama together and continue three cycles on your own. Okay, now you might find it helpful to place a hand near the collarbones and a hand below the belly button so you can feel the top and bottom sections and maybe close the eyes, relax the shoulders, sit tall but not rigidly and prepare to begin by first breathing fully through the nose and clearing it out through the mouth. Then close the mouth into the lowest section, breathe in one third. Pause into the middle, one-third. Pause into the top, one-third. Hold the breath, relax. Through your nose, empty the breath slowly. Hold the breath out, sit tall. Second cycle, inhale, lowest section. Pause, inhale, middle. Pause, inhale, top, hold, exhale slowly. Hold, third cycle, inhale, lowest section, pause, inhale, middle, pause, inhale, top, hold, Exhale slowly. Hold it out. On your own, continue three more cycles.
And when you finish, let go of controlling your breath. Notice how you feel. Continue to breathe naturally. Stay aware of your breath as it is. And let's set up for our final restorative posture, which you could choose to stay in for Shavasana if you like. So fish pose with two blocks. Decide how you want to set up the blocks. The mildest version is to set up the tallest height of the block at the rearmost end of your mat. This will support your skull. And the medium height block can either trace the midline of the mat the blocks are only maybe an inch or two apart, or it can cross the width of the mat where the blocks are maybe five or six inches apart. Now sitting down, facing away from the blocks, you can decide to either turn out the knees, uh, the thighs, splay the knees apart and bring the soles of the feet together, Baddha Konasana. Here you can set a blanket on top of your belly and pelvis for grounding, or you can decide to stretch the legs forward Splay the feet apart, just like Shavasana, and maybe use pillow under the backs and knees to support the lower back. Also a blanket over the pelvis if you like. Now, as you lie back, find the area that's just beneath the bottom tips of your shoulder blades to land on the closest edge of the closest block. So that the block helps to open up the chest and then the shoulder bones release down into the space between the blocks. The back of your skull, not the back of your neck, is resting on the furthest block. Now, when you arrive, you can decide if you want to change the orientation of the block that's under your ribcage. If you want to trace the midline of the mat instead or the other way. And make sure that your shoulders feel pretty symmetrical. They're relaxed away from the neck. Neck is long. And then if you feel like you want to open the chest even further, like you're already pretty open in the shoulders with all the work we've done, you can tilt the block that's under your skull one step lower or even two steps lower up to you. Make sure you can still breathe well. And then let the arms rest down by your sides. Rotate the shoulders externally so that your palms face up, backs of the hands resting on the floor. Consciously walk the shoulder blades down the back. Feel into your hips and legs and feet. Invite them to be symmetrical as well. And then close your eyes. Land your attention where in your body you can most easily feel the breath coming and going. Continue to breathe naturally as you just feel the breath as a way to stay present in the moment. Stay here a few breaths longer if you will change position for Shavasana. Otherwise, stay here for Shavasana. If you are changing positions in a moment, take it very gently. Be mindful how you transition, not to move too quickly or lift the head too fast. Honoring the relaxed state you've begin, begun to cultivate.
We'll rest here for a few last minutes in Shavasana. Sense the way your physical body feels right now as it's responding to how you practiced yoga. Take your time, begin with small and subtle movements to start waking up your body. Like you might just begin turning the head slowly You might begin wiggling out the shoulders, wiggling the fingers, maybe circling the hands, stretching the arms, stretching the feet. Maybe keep your eyes closed to help continue tuning inward as you turn over gently onto your right side and rest in a fetal position. This fetal position symbolizes rebirth, a new beginning. As we come from corpse pose, Shavasana, which symbolizes death, a release or shedding away of something that you uncovered in the practice. Peeling layers of tension in the body or mind. And so as you lie in this fetal position, I invite you to remind yourself what your intention is for this practice today. Recalibrate. 
Then take your time to rise slowly and find a comfortable way to sit for five minutes in meditation. You might stack the right palm face up on top of the left palm face up and the center of your lap, letting the thumb tips touch. Or here's a mudra for inviting balanced energy as each finger symbolizes elements of the earth and bringing them together in harmony. It's bringing the opposite hand fingertips to touch the opposite hand fingertips, like you're holding a sphere between the palms and just letting the elbows bend gently so the palms are hovering around the area of the solar plexus, the upper belly, and then closing the eyes. Feeling the breath again without controlling the breath. As a result of your practice, sense your energy right now. Sense the energy of your body, your mind, your breathing, your heart. As we continue our focus on brahmacharya, what does it feel like when your energy is in balance? What does it feel like when your heart feels in balance, your heart energy, the energy of love, compassion, forgiveness, joy, and harmony? Can you tap into that feeling and concentrate on it? You might visualize something that represents that. Like peaceful nature.
Notice how you're feeling now in your mind and heart. What is something you can offer gratitude for? Return to your intention, saying it again. Remember to whom you dedicated today's practice. And together, let's close chanting the seed sound, the Bija Mantra of your heart energy center of Anahata Chakra. And that sound is what you might say when you taste something delicious. Yum. Let's chant yum to close three times. Deep breath in. Yum. 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 Bow in towards the wisdom of your heart, honoring the light within. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.